Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Hope you're all keeping safe and well. Uh, weather's not so great here in the UK, certainly not garden running session uh, weather. So I've got a pre-recorded one uh, of the Sapper by uh, Backman, Class 47, the rail freight distribution sector. Uh, after that, I'm going to do a quick chat about planning with some exciting new ideas that I'd very much welcome your opinion on. Uh, and also the baseboards have arrived. So I made start on that yesterday, but that was interrupted by the weather as well. Uh, but I'll be also doing uh, a new series on that as well. So uh, yeah, if you like the sound of that, kettle's on and uh, enjoy the running session and I'll bring you back for the planning talk. Bye for now.
Okay, welcome back folks. Hope you enjoyed the brief running session. Uh, there is another running session that I'm due to do of the Hatton's Originals Class 66, the GBRF liveried one, uh, the Royal Corps of Signals. So as soon as the weather improves, I'll get that one out on the uh, lockdown layout as well. Um, okay, so what have we got? I just wanted to have a bit of a chat about planning again, just a bit of an update. Uh, for those of you who saw the previous video on the uh, planning, um, and also really for those who haven't, uh, what I was going to feature just to recap is two levels uh, where there's a lower level that crosses a river. Now this is the uh, River Mersey, but I'm not going to be sort of prototypically modelling the exact bridge on this particular area operationally. Uh, but it, I want to take the inspiration from it. OK, so uh, yeah, so there's a lower level line. And then there's an upper level line and it basically both lines cross and cross a river in very close proximity. So that's what I really wanted to produce something like that. Um, if you've not seen it, my scenic inspiration and planning video uh, that shows some footage of a real life uh, example of this in the River Mersey in Heaton Mersey. OK, so the bridges aren't there any longer. They were removed some years ago. Uh, however, I think it'd be quite good to model something like that, but obviously it's a model era layout. Anyway, I'm waffling. So the first idea, this is a bit I was really hoping you could give us a bit of an opinion on. Uh, what I've done previously is I've drawn, when I've been planning a layout, I've done lots of plans so I can look back on them, check I'm okay with them. And, and this is really a bit of an example of why I think it's well worth doing that. The original plan was I'd have the upper line, which is double track and it's based on a uh, branch line with a hint that it's going sort of industrial area that way eventually and out into kind of quarries, other lines in this direction with this line being a quarry line. So that's just going to be uh, going to the, uh, the, the, the quarries based around those around Buxton, Peak Forest, etc. Uh, and then, of course, this line would go to further quarries and other uh, other, other kind of uh, passenger locations, etc. And then there would be a lower line, lower level, uh, which would be a more of a main line type running. So you'd have more busy trains, express trains and uh, different types of freight going along there. OK, so that was the original idea with this being a kind of a station uh, of some description down here. And it got me thinking and I kept looking at the plan. And again, this is where I think it's well worth doing plans. Um, it got me thinking and I thought I wasn't quite happy with the fact that you would have these lines in such close proximity with a station here rather than somewhere over here. Now, there are lines where you've, you will get a station and two stations in the same kind of small town that are on completely different lines. Uh, one example is New Mills, where there's New Mills and New Mills Central. Um, so you do get that. And again, it, it's how much sort of attention to prototype you want to pay, really. But there was something I just wasn't quite happy with. So I thought I moved on to this. Now, what you'll notice with this one is that I've got the same feature that I can build around this area with the crossing. But all I've done is I've moved that station from here to up here. So that station would cover, it would still be split level, because if you remember on the old idea, this line would effectively go via some kind of tunnel or scenic break of some description, something in front of it. So that this line would actually be below this line. And again, this line would come out here. So you wouldn't actually see the two lines at this point. Now, with this one, this would still be a higher level with potentially brick retaining wall, some description like that. And then a lower level where you can have the station covering both. And I'm thinking station size, something, well, similar to kind of a, a stop port, that kind of uh, representation to an extent. So you'd still have this would be mainly a freight line and branch line, kind of local sprinter trains, etc. that kind of thing. And then you would still have this for, as more of a mainline representation. So I hope that makes sense. Um, 
I'll just uh, recap just for those who haven't seen these videos. If you if you have a look, I'm doing a bit of a series, so it'll give my full ideas and plans of what I wanted. But uh, basically, the concepts were four running lines. Okay, I wanted to use clever use of passing loops. So effectively, using loops to store trains. So if I had four passing loops. I could have the potential of eight trains with four running and four in storage somewhere around the line. So it's not all fiddle yard, it's it's getting some. So for example, here on this upper line where you've got the double tracks, I could incorporate another line going off there that would, in the non-scenic section, end up uh, storing a train and then just rejoining that line. But in this one, you can have a train parked in there at that station as well. So it's just things like that. Uh, and again, this would form another big passing loop effectively, joining onto the, the outer upper lines somewhere around here. Uh, so yeah, clever use of that really. Um, I came up with an idea of era breaks. Okay, that's a bit of a new one. It might sound a bit strange, but I'll try and explain it a little bit. Um, it was to do with if you had, say, somewhere around the line, you'd have a, a, a preservation railway where you could have a main line passing through it. You could model that station as a complete preservation station. So in your imagination, the only things that are going to be running on that line are preservation trains, preservation coach, all the uh, diesel, steam engines, whatever. But that would be on the main line still. So when you're not actually looking at it and you're looking at another part of the lane, the, the, uh, the layouts, you'd have freight trains and modern era and all sorts going through it. So that was just another, another idea behind era brakes, basically. Um, use of space. So again, that was things like doing stations, but not full size stations, but just doing representations of one end of them, basically. So they can get more lines going in. Um, just to add on this one, when you've not got the station there, it would open it up. Yeah, the station's a bit further from your viewing area, but it just does open up a real nice embankment down here with potential to do some mills or things up here in village, what have you. Um, scenic breaks, yeah, I think I've explained that a little bit. Uh, anticipation, so main line only visible where appropriate. So again, yeah, just having trains disappearing at points and then reappearing so we've got four main lines at the busy section on the town section or city section around here um, but not so many main lines altogether on other sections so I, I could still potentially hide some of these I don't know around the LC um, and train allocations okay so what I was looking at doing as well was having more your branch line or your quarry line traffic so these would be quarry lines, uh, sorry, quarry trains, um, like the ones that you'll see at the Peak Forest with the, the Class 66s, the two GBRFs. Uh, again, I'd be doing it things, so if the quarries are over here, I'd be having it quite prototypical in that we'd have full quarry trains going on this line in that direction. And then we'd have empties going in this line up this direction. Um, and also you'd have the upper lines would mainly service the preservation line, whereas the lower main lines are going to be the ones that will mainly service the uh, TMD, the DRS TMD. Uh, so on these, you'd have more kind of your, uh, your more conventional freight traffic and your more express trains, that kind of thing. Uh, vertical extent, yeah, that was one of the, uh, sort of key criteria for the layout to start off with that you'd have two different uh, levels two different track bread levels track bed levels uh, which would both be incorporated like this so that would be I think that would make quite an interesting feature that having a split level station um, and again operationally I think it's perhaps just a little bit more prototypical that if you've got the option for having a station there or there where you've got both lines in existence that that, that station would service. I think that's perhaps a little bit more accurate from a main line perspective. I may be wrong, I don't know. You may think of other examples where that's not the case. Um, if you have got any comments or feedback on your opinions on which one of these may look more interesting or maybe best to do, they do still feature the same kind of 
uh, bridge feature here, you'll notice uh, it's just basically moving the stations from there to there. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'd be really grateful if you could let us know what you think on that one. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the running session and this. Uh, when the weather improves a bit, I've got that other scenic inspiration looking at the Peak District, uh, so I'll be doing that trip. Uh, and also I'll be continuing to work on the baseboards. Um, I will do a video for anyone who's uh, new to uh, building baseboards, constructing them, just to let them know the way I do it. Um, obviously, if you've done loads of those, it may not be of too much interest to you. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy that, and I'll uh, speak to you soon. Keep safe and well. Bye for now.